Hi, Kerry here from My Cloud Bookkeeping. I work with small business owners and entrepreneurs and help them to utilize QuickBooks Online to keep their business bookkeeping up to date and make accurate up to the minute decisions to manage their business finances. The bank feed or bank transaction tab has changed yet again. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I really dislike when things are changed or messed around for no reason. Now this change, I think, makes sense. I'm excited to show you how the formatting has been adjusted to make it more logical. And some of the wording has been changed to also clarify what's going on. So here, check this out. So you may have opened your bank transactions tab or as I tend to call it, the bank feed and noticed that yet again, it has changed. So it looks different. It has different wording. The tabs are different. If you're in a rush, you've got a lot of catch up to do, switch to previous version and just get caught up. Then come back to this video because there's actually a lot to love. As I mentioned, the, the improvements or the changes that they've made this time actually feel like improvements and not just changes for the sake of changes. So the first thing um, I like, well, you can see across the top here, the um, accounts are still listed across here. That has not changed. But what has changed is the naming of these tabs. So pending kind of makes a lot more sense to me than for review. That was so confusing to people. These are pending. I hope that makes sense. They're waiting for you to look at them and then posted, posted into QuickBooks. It's it kind of it. Yes, it's bookkeeping and accounting language, but it makes a lot more sense. I think it's like, OK, we've got them pending now. We've posted them to QuickBooks. They're in our books and the excluded tab, which you'll only use under rare circumstances. I'll mention it a little bit further on, but if you're reconciling your bank or your credit card, you don't want to go excluding transactions because you won't be able to complete your reconciliation. So what we're looking at right now is the pending tab. And immediately you can see that it's different. Another thing that I love is that the information that comes directly from the bank, these columns here, the date, the bank description, the amount that was spent or received is really clear. Previously, the AI suggestions, the uh, customer vendor or the categories were included over here. So people would look at it and it didn't matter how many times I said it's AI, it's not real. People would say QuickBooks has got this wrong. That's not who it is. And I'd be saying, yes, it's AI. You need to tell it where to put it. Whereas I think now having this over on this side, it's a little easier to follow that, hey, here's the real information and now here's what we're going to do with it. So that's what's happening here. Now, because this file is just completely new and not used for anything. It doesn't have those suggestions popping up. So the AI previously has been learning and then the new AI assist will probably be a little bit, I guess, hyper. I'm not too sure. It'll be interesting to see how that works. Now, then when we go across here, we have the option to match or categorize right here. So much clearer. And then once we know what we're, whether we're matching it or categorizing it, we post it into our books. I, I don't know about you. I just feel like this flow and the wording is just so much easier. Now I'm going to pop onto this little drop down and see what we've got. Split, create rule or exclude. So it's nice to have those options right there if we need them. I'm going to expand the row and we're going to talk a little bit more about categorizing things. So you can see from right here, we have the option to categorize it in this row. So we can select Intuit here. Do we have, oh, I don't have Intuit. That's so funny that I don't have Intuit sitting as a, uh, as a vendor. So if I did, we would choose Intuit. Okay. It's not there. Uh, and then processing fees. That makes sense, I guess, if that's what you're calling it. And then we can just simply post that expense. So now if we go and we have a look in our posted tab, we'll see, we've got a whole pile of things in here including this uh, charge for $3.50 that went into processing fees. So we're going to pop back to pending. We'll have a look at another expense. So we'll scroll down here a little bit further. And here we have another one from Intuit, but we'll just use this for an example. Now it's been suggested as processing fees. It's learned from last time, completely makes sense. If we click on the row, the same way we used to click on the row before, it expands and gives you the options. So the transaction type, is an expense and it's processing fees. 
if we had a vendor here, we could put Intuit in and we can also select a class and let's choose level three class. And if we're using locations, we can choose, well, these are obviously standard things that don't make a lot of sense, but you know, our level four location. Uh, and then we can apply it to a customer. So I'm going to put company one. I've got company one as a company here. And if this is billable and we want to charge the customer for this Intuit fee, it could be something that's not an Intuit fee, maybe it's parking or something, but you know, this is one of the, the joys of using the, the standard files. I don't have so much to play with. And the other thing here is product or service. Now, I'm going to suggest that you don't ever allocate to a product or service from the rank transactions tab. I have another video showing you why not to do that. Just don't do it. <laughs> if you're going to be um, ordering products or services that you want to allocate correctly, create an expense or a bill and then match it. So what we're doing now is we're allocating things that we're going to categorize and post. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have an expense, it's processing fees, and we're charging it to company one. Now we also have the option to split our expenses. You saw it from the drop down on the right and we could do it here. So maybe we want to split these processing fees between processing fees and bank charges, let's say. I don't know why we would, but bank charges. And uh, so we're going to put, I don't know, $2.59 goes to processing fees that we get from company one and then two dollars fifty is going to go just purely to bank charges with no class no location nothing and then we can simply split and post you'll notice that this word post is down here as well can't find my cursor there it is split and post and that puts it into our books in quickbooks oh it gave an error but it seems to be okay now no, it's not okay. I wonder what that's going on. Please click on the row to see the specific error. How annoying. What's going on? Post. Oh, it's the billable it doesn't like. Okay, I'm taking off the billable because we don't need to have that for this exercise. So there we go. Let's post. And we got it. So um, let's scroll down a little bit further. Here we have an amount that says payroll and it's been allocated to subcontractors. Uh, normally something that says payroll would be to an employee, but for the sake of this exercise, let's just say we're paying a subcontractor. So we're gonna um, choose Lowe's. Lowe's is our subcontractor, which I know is a hardware store, but we're just gonna go with that, okay? So here we have Lowe's, subcontractor. If we wanted to allocate to a customer we would expand the row and say that this subcontractor related to our customer company one company one or company two i'm not going to click billable because it's just not working in this file but you may want to click billable or you just might be tracking the costs and then we click post You'll see the next suggestion now has automatically come up as being lows and subcontractors. If we don't need to allocate to a customer and we don't need to split it or assign a class or a, a location, we're just going to simply post. Now you can also change which columns show up up here. So let's pop up to here. Just see what that looks like. If class and location are regular for you, you can put it in here so that then you can allocate that class without having to split the row. Um, you click, sorry, expand the row. So right away, straight away, you can choose whichever class you want to assign. Uh, this is money coming in, going to travel makes no sense. Um, we're going to put company one in here. Company one, uh, we won't have travel. We're going to have, we want to have income because the money's received. Let's see what our income options are. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's taking so long, <clears throat> excuse me, to get to an income account when it's money in. It's a little odd, isn't it? Here we go. We're just going to pop it into sales. Once again, normally sales are going to be coming through on an invoice or a sales receipt. So if you're hitting it in from the bank feed, maybe it's just something over the counter. So keep that in mind. So this is a good time to mention the matching. 
If you've already entered the bill, the expense, the invoice, or the sales receipt into QuickBooks, you want to match. You want to match and look for something to match it to. So here we have here, I have a sales receipt for 67.20, payees test. We're going to match to this. If we'd added it instead of matching, then we would have the amount showing up twice in our bank and twice in our sales. So our sales would be overstated and the bank would be overstated. Now you would find it when you come to do your bank reconciliation, but be really careful and think. You shouldn't be posting or categorizing and posting things into QuickBooks if you've already entered them. That's when you wanna match them. Uh, another thing that I noticed when we were in here with the row slightly expanded is that the memo comes directly from the bank description. You can add more in here, um, cash received on, I don't know, May 20th or whatever you want to, um, or it could be deposit from customer, you like just whatever you wanted to type in here that would make it easier for you to remember or just for records for somebody else for later. Another cool thing here is if you want more information, you can actually send a quick note and ask, for example, here it says ask for a receipt. And then an email will go out to whoever you address it to. It's not set up in this company. And you'll get that further information, which you can also then add. You can add a receipt from here. So if you have stuff in a PDF or an email or something, I've clicked this and it's opened up a photo file. <laughs> Clearly not what I need, but you never know. It, it might be. You might have photographs of, of different receipts and things, or maybe you've dragged and dropped them from emails. So these, this is something you can now do with this same row without necessarily having to expand it. So then I'm just going to post this transaction. So as you can see, not a lot has really changed. They've just renamed some things, put things into a more logical order, and hopefully made it a little bit easier to follow. Uh, do remember that you can change what you see. You can even, I think down here, say that it doesn't uh, copy the bank description to the memo. You can not have that there. You could, uh, oh, an editable date field. I don't know where you'd want to do that. So much that you can do in here. And once again, don't use the product service. Uh, check out the video link above. But hopefully this is going to help you to navigate this new presentation of the bank feed and you won't need to switch to previous version anymore. Good luck. Hopefully this will be much easier to follow. All of the features like rules and split are still there, but it should be a lot more obvious what's in QuickBooks and what still needs to be matched or posted. The same caution is always be sure that you've not already entered something into QuickBooks before you post it. If it's in QuickBooks, you should be matching or your income and expenses or both will be doubled up. You'll be able to find this if you reconcile regularly. So make that a habit and be sure that your books are in order and your numbers are accurate. Let me know what you think. So be sure to like, subscribe and ring that little bell because as I have more QuickBooks tips and rollouts, I'll be making new videos. And as always, I would love to hear from you. Cheers.